Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and I figured I'd give you guys an update on the Raise 3D N2 Plus 3D printer since, as you can see, it's printing something right now. I've posted a few things to my Twitter account, but it's only fair to give you a video update. So let's do this. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> Ah, welcome back. So here's the Raise 3D N2 Plus 3D printer currently printing. And last I left you, I had this little USB stick from Raise 3D. And the manual said, hey, we've got some pre-sliced models on this for you to try. And I stuck it in the side and I was going to print from it. And then it didn't work. And it was one o'clock in the morning and it was my birthday. And I was like, no, I'm going to go to bed. And then a day or two after that, I was able to install their software on my laptop, and I was really impressed with the user interface. It looked great. Plus, it allowed for Wi-Fi connectivity to this printer. And so what you see printing here and the things I've printed before this have all been initiated via Wi-Fi via my laptop, which I think is so future. I do want to clear up a few things from the unboxing video that some people had questions on. And the first thing is this. This thing right here look i've got the tubes sticking out so the instructions are a little vague on these but i did contact raise 3d via twitter and i've maintained a support conversation with the guys there uh first let me just say awesome company great responses good support offers social high fives that's an a plus in my book they said they leave it up to the user to decide whether or not they want to put these tubes on there's a, a big thing that goes over the top, a cover, but I'm not printing ABS or anything. And this is just PLA on a hotbed. I don't really need to keep an enclosed environment. The tubes uh, attach here, go into, and then there is this thing right here. And, and the, the tubes go into these right here, right here. And that goes on top. Yeah. It took a, a Twitter user or a Facebook user, I think it was, to, to show me the correct placement of that. Once I got that, I'll go... Oh, Oh, I almost forgot. I was having a heck of a time with these bed clips. And someone said, hey, why don't you just use the binder clips that are included in the box? And of course I did, and that's what's on there now. But the reason I use these is because the quick start guide explicitly showed these being used, not the binder clips. And that's, that's why I went with them. All right, the first print was this cube. Look at it. It's so cute. And it printed on a raft and Rage 3D said that the bed is leveled so that printing with a raft was optimal. I don't know exactly what that means, but I've tried with and without a raft and I've had similar results. More on that in just a moment. Rage 3D sent me of the spools, a yellow spool, a very yellow spool. And I thought, well, I should print me a really big Pikachu, right? I mean, the last time uh, you saw my other Pikachu was printed on the G-Max printer, and since then Barnacles uh, took a poop nap with it. So I figured that one, unless I can disinfect it, <laughs> I should probably print a new one. And I tried, and I sent out tweets, and I updated uh, photos on it, and everybody's like, yeah, this is awesome, this is awesome. Here it is. Oh, he's missing his head. So this is the Pikachu. He's hollow. He's three shells. Uh, he's 0.3 millimeter height, 1.75 millimeter filament. It was printing it, I believe, 50 or 60 millimeters per second. Uh, it, it turned out wonderful, even though it's missing the head and the ears and the top of the lightning tail. It's still easily one of the best prints I've ever seen. Oh, man. Uh, but I, I could tell that uh, there was a little bit, there was a layer mishap right here, right here, and it had fallen off the bed. Originally, I thought maybe it was bed adhesion, and the Ray's 3D guys thought it was bed adhesion as well, so I went to reprint this, this time with a raft. And, oh, that failed too. Here's something interesting. Because it's a dual extruder, I can choose one extruder to do the raft and infill and support and all that, and the other extruder to do the model, so the raft is a blue raft, and... Pikachu is yellow. Holy cow, though, look at this failure. It's, it's sad. Uh, when you do use both extruders, there is an ooze shield that is automatically uh, printed, and you can tell. So there's, there's the Pikachu foot underneath the ooze shield. Uh, but a spectacular failure nonetheless. And I found that this was stuck to the build plate, but the build plate itself was shoved out of position. What? So 
Bad adhesion wasn't the issue, the nozzle was knocking it. Okay, with a nozzle knock, it's not really exciting, and I was trying to diagnose it. I talked to the Race 3D guys, and they said the left nozzle is specifically 0.5 millimeters longer, deeper, I don't know, whatever the right term is, uh, than the right nozzle. And so the left nozzle is supposed to be the standard primary nozzle, and the right nozzle is, is whatever. Uh, adjustments are easy via one screw. You just want to do one screw. So I'm going to level them up because that's what I'm used to for dual extruder printing. Uh, but now what I'm noticing, this is this is the Chaos Cortec Bob Ohm um, uh, model, and it's it's printing okay. But as the extruder passes over the back infill of the model, it goes thump 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 thump. So I know that nozzle is impacting the lines that it's printing and it's towards the back half of the plate and that's where it caught Pikachu's tail to knock it off and so I think the issue is the build plate isn't level front to back and I'm going to talk to Ray's 3D support and we're going to figure this out obviously. Knowing all of that right now this printer is shaping up to be one of the best if not the best quality printer I've ever used the bed level problem isn't a, isn't a catastrophic issue, right? All printers need level beds, and it's just I need to figure out how to level this bed front to back. Uh, you saw the Pikachu model. It looks awesome. Up close, it, the lines are great. It looks wonderful. I'm really hoping this Bob Ohm model finishes all the way through, even though I do hear the nozzle knocking against the lines it's printed. Oh, I, I think it'll look really good. It's in the blue. Race 3D said they may be able to find a yellow roll and send it out to me because I use so much in these Pikachu prints. I do want to print a really big Pikachu. Uh, what else can I tell you about this printer? It's 12 by 12 by 24 inches tall as for the, for the build area. The interface is a homegrown interface. Uh, it has Wi-Fi printing. It has uh, camera capabilities. You do have to SSH into this and then start a service which then lets the camera work which is just crazy that's so awesome uh I, this printer has four usb ports come on come on the user interface on the printer itself is also fairly wonderful and i know that the user interface itself does not affect print quality at the same time it is a very nice touch and finally, this printer, I don't know if they classify it as a desktop printer because it's on wheels. <laughs> I don't, but uh, regardless, this is a huge printer. I'm getting some really good prints off of it. There is one issue with the build plate not being level front to back, and I'm going to solve that issue quickly. I'm going to be posting a lot of images and a lot of videos about this printer on my social network. So be sure to follow me on Twitter. Be sure to follow my Instagram account and be sure to follow me on my Facebook page because that's where all the updates are going to be. I'll do my best to answer any questions you have about this machine and I'm really looking forward to printing some outrageously large things to demonstrate the printer's capabilities of printing that. Oh, I'm excited. All right, that's it. We're going to call it good. Thanks for watching this little update on the Raise 3D N2 Plus 3D printer. Give it a thumbs up if this was informational. Leave a comment down below if there's something I didn't cover that you'd like an answer to. A very big thanks to all of my patrons who support me at patreon.com and make this content possible. Uh, don't forget to love your neighbor and hug more often. As always, high five. Oh. Oh man, it's look, it's it's 1:30 in the morning, 1:40 in the morning. Uh, I started the print over here. Check it out. So here's the here's the bob on. Okay, there's the infill. It looks good, but it was clipping. It was starting to do that, that thing I was talking about. And no sooner did I turn off the camera than I got a message back from Ray's 3D support, and I just I was talking to them, and uh, it's, it's, there was a few bolts that were loose. Uh, belts are tight, but they didn't think it was an unlevel bed. They thought maybe it was something else. It turns out those tubes, the um, these things, uh, the filament was really binding as it was going through it. The filament they provided has a matte finish to it, and maybe that's causing some binding in the tubes. Um, but if it's binding and it's having a hard time pulling the filament through the tubes, then that can adjust the, the print head, right? So uh, I removed the tubes, 
we're reprinting the bob bomb and uh, when I wake up later in the morning, I'll check it and I'll see what's going on. But uh, regardless, right now, it's printing again. We'll see if this works. You guys are awesome. High five. For real this time.